Today, we are going to go on to the second factor of the nine factors for the sharpening of controlling faculties, namely Sakicca Kriya. In uh, trying to note the psychophysical objects, one has got to do it carefully, respectfully, and it's and hence the expression Tatacha Sakicca Kriyaya Sampadeti. That means by working carefully in noting the mind body objects one can only accomplish this bhavana jnana. So, in other words, one must be careful in the practice in order to gain inside knowledge, bhavana jnana. That goes to say, that goes without saying, that if one is not careful and respectful, one will not gain this inside knowledge, bhavana jnana. Whatever does you undertake, once you are fully aware of the advantages of the practice of the of the task, you are bound to cherish the practice, the, the work. You will do it respectfully and carefully. This is the nature of the practice. If you are earning money, you've got to work carefully, respectfully to earn money for your livelihood. And if you are studying, going to school for your education, you must study it carefully, respectfully, in order to gain uh, knowledge. Whatever does you do, you got to do in this way. Once you are aware of your own benefit of the practice, of the task, you are bound to do it carefully and respectfully. Instead of doing it lightly or in a very cool and unconcerned manner, you do it respectfully and carefully and meticulously. So you've got to be wakeful, energetic, alert, diligent in doing this, undertaking the work, instead of gazing or being spaced out, thinking of this or that, or being lazy and sluggish. One has got to do it diligently. So there's much to talk about this part of the factor. So Tipatana practice favors or likes a respect, respectful practice. In other words, Tipatana uh, likes or loves, cherishes those who practice carefully and respectfully. When you say respectfully, carefully means not to just bow down and worship as a Tipitana or anything. It means one has got to practice respectfully. If we practice respectfully, if you uh, help uh, the Dhamma in this way, Dhamma will also help you in return. Hence this expression Sakecha Kriya. Also said Sakecha Karitaya. That means when you are doing respectfully, it is not just one time or practicing respectfully just once or twice. It's not so. One has got to make it a habit, make it a practice yes. continuously in a useful manner. Uh, continuously. Make it a habit. You must try your best. You must make it a practice to do it carefully, make it a habit, then only you will be able to do it, accomplish it. Of course, prior to the practice, before you come here, before you, before you came here, you have lived your life comfortably, in a casual way, free willing, giving your mind a free will. Even after you have come here in the beginning, you have brought this habit with you, so you will be just practicing or doing it in a very casual way. So from a casual manner, 
you got to practice in a special manner make it a habit for instance when you are changing postures from sitting to standing or standing to sitting you do it slowly mindfully and then when you are walking about not to look around here and there even if you have the eyes to see and not pretend not to hear anything even if you have the ears and not to speak unnecessarily if even if you have the mouth to speak so though you are strong person a very healthy person you should behave as though you are not strong you are weak as though you are sick as though you are a sick person like a patient in hospital so in the beginning of the practice you may endure you may feel some unbearable sensations pain and so on in the body you got to make it you got to make it a practice or habit to bear it with grim teeth if it's <coughs> excruciating then you got to bear it tolerate it then such as sakicha karita karita when you are noting every rising object in the body beginning with the main object of rising and falling when you're sitting or lifting moving and placing when you're walking you are trying to note everything every object at least uh, although you are not able to note everything in the beginning at least you should be determined resolved that i will note everything at least that should be that determination strong determination then make it a habit to be careful and respectful in the practice only then you will be able to see the dissolution of the psychophysical formations mind body formations so the yogi's highest goal is to see the destruction of formations or dissolution of formations so then only you will be able to cultivate inside knowledge only when you do it carefully respectfully you will be able to gain the result such as the discernment of mind and body that this is the mind this is the body this is the noting mind this is a noted object in this way you will be able to differentiate between the noting mind and the noted object and then the conditionality of mind body that they have causes and effects <laughs> they arise as a result of cause and effect and then on to seeing the universal characteristics of impermanence and so on and as you are able to see the fleeting away of the objects that objects arise and pass away very quickly and you are able to follow it then you will come to say to yourself oh i am seeing i am observing the fleeting away of the objects in a fantastic manner so in the beginning yogis had to note every arising object but they should have this thing in mind that is the highest goal their highest goal should be understood as seeing the dissolution of all formations in the beginning of the practice however it may be it is not possible to change postures mindfully slowly from sitting to standing or standing to sitting one will not be able to do it slowly and mindfully but uh, you got to make it a habit in order to activate your mindfulness like a waterfall your mind has been like a waterfall with full force and when the waterfall comes uh, comes down in full force it is very difficult to dam it or to block the flow of this waterfall not easy to do it but you got to make it a habit if you make it a habit you're going to get, you're bound to get it just like i'm saying practice makes perfect you got to activate your mindfulness of every rising object so as not to miss them you got to take an aim at the object every second not to miss it without gap then uh, concentrate Uh, activate your mindfulness 
not lightly but carefully and respectfully. Then you got to use your driving force, the heat of energy, in order to uh, sustain your mindfulness on the object of attention. Then it will be the dogging mind will be concurrent with the object. This is what is meant by doing it respectfully and carefully. Once you take an aim and apply energy, the mind is bound to be sustained on the object. Then, as much as you are able to activate your mindfulness in this way, your noting mind will fall calm and collected on the object of attention, which is very, which is priceless, very worthy, worthy practice. We just imagine, because the mind falls calm and collected on the object of attention. Because you are doing it respectfully and carefully, the noting mind is concurrent with the object of attention. At this stage, your mind will not wander anywhere, especially to unwholesome and skillful thoughts, such as the thoughts of sensual pleasures. The mind will not think about enjoying life, to see good things, hear good things and so on. There will be no thoughts of harming others or wishing to destroy others, wishing to harm others, to commit acts of cruelty. There will be no such unwholesome, unskillful thoughts. Because there is this power of aiming and uh, meticulous attention and the driving force to, no, to sustain your noting mind on the object, the mind falls calm and collected on the object. This is the result of activating of mindfulness. In that case, there will be no defilements, no uh, hindrances arising in your stream of consciousness. It's the, by not giving a chance to, uh, to arise not giving a chance to these defilements or hindrances to arise in your stream of consciousness. Not removing it after it has arisen, but not giving a chance. This is how it uh, does away with these hindrances or defilements. With viriya, energy, the quality of energy is to block the path to unskillfulness. It prevents, by preventing unwholesome thoughts, unwholesome uh, hindrances. Not that after it, it has arisen, it is removed, but by not giving a chance, they are said to be prevented. They are not giving a chance. That means, because the unskillful thoughts are not giving a chance, the way is open excuse me, to pure thoughts, pure stream of consciousness. It blocks from one side, <clears throat> in one way it blocks the path to unskillfulness. And on another side, another way, it opens the way to skillfulness. Such is the benefit of Launa Viriya, exhaustion of energy. The way is open to skillfulness. Such as mindfulness, sati, concentration, samadhi, and then the inside knowledge, wisdom, jnana. Of course, uh, this will, may not happen in the beginning, but with activation of mindfulness, it is bound to happen. All these things, skillful things, skillful thoughts, or skillful deeds, are the result of the activation of mindfulness, or mindfulness produced skillfulness. With the with sati, with mindfulness, activation of mindfulness, the defilements will not enter. Defilements such as greed, hatred, delusion, all these things will not enter because the mind is guarded or protected, our record which is a manifestation of mindfulness, sati. 
because the tea is the mind is mindful the mind is guarded or protected by means of mindfulness there is no there cannot be any entry of these defilements there will be no likes and dislikes there means no no desire for sensual pleasures nor will there be any dislike or anger regarding things that things undesirable so there will be no defilements at all they are not giving a chance to arise because the mind is protected so if the mind is protected areka because uh, there is no hindrances entering the mind becomes secure all the time that is given by this expression gopti security if the mind is secure then there will be freedom vimukti just like uh, when you are when your uh, house is guarded or your place is guarded protected there will be no enemies coming into to attack you so too because the mind is protected or guarded no there will no there will be no entry of nirvanas hindrances no defilements so that it will be freedom there will be freedom of the mind so that you will not be moved by these defilements such as lust craving for desirable objects there will be only santi peace such is the benefit of the practice and then by activity mindfulness moment to moment there will be momentary concentration kanika samadhi so that because the mind falls calm and collected momentarily a moment to moment on the object of attention there will be no distraction of the mind no restlessness no thoughts about sense of pleasures the mind will only become consolidated fall on the fall on object of attention such is the quality of the practice the door will be open to wholesomeness kusalas because you are taking an aim the mind will not wander elsewhere because you are applying energy you exert energy the doubting noting mind will be sustained on the object of attention just blocking the path to hindrances and defilements such is the power of sati and samadhi mindfulness and concentration just imagine if you are able to practice this mindfulness and concentration for 1 minute at the rate of 1 second per uh or some mind 60 times in 1 minute your mind will be guarded and you be your mind will become wholesome and in 5 minutes 300 times wholesomeness skillfulness which is the result of sati samadhi in this way you got to accumulate these skillful deeds such as bhavana mind development practice so in this way you develop this practice so that the practice will multiply the practice will be enhanced and in this way you make a habit such as sakicha karita making a habit of the practice by doing it carefully and respectfully in doing so one should not take note of the surrounding what's happening externally that is uh, if if you are taking care if you are mining the external things then you will not, it will it will be tend amount to not being respectful or careful to the practice that means you got you got to control your faculty of the eye your eye should be your eye should be cast down not to look here and there you have to control the ear faculty not uh, you have to pretend not to hear anything and speaking also you got to control the speech 
Even if you're not speaking by mouth, you may be speaking mentally. If two persons are talking to each other, then there can be a limit. If one stops, the other also will stop. But if you are talking by yourself while sitting for one hour, it is the worst thing. You may be talking to yourself mentally and there will be no stopping of talking. So, that is not nice. So, when you are changing posture also, you should do it slowly, carefully. Although in the beginning it may be a little fast, but you've got to slow it down. Slow down your speed of movement to zero, gradually. And it is said in the text that if you, even if you have the eyes to see, you must pretend that you are blind. A blind person will not see anything. But uh, we are not saying that you should make your eyes blind. Or oh, I am blind your eyes. But you should behave as though you are blind. Because a blind person will not look at anything. Even if he or she looks, he, will not, he or she will not see anything. A blind person will not look anywhere. So also you should behave like that. Now the yogis are moving about. Some yogis are just looking here and there instead of uh, keeping your eyes cast down. They look here and there. They should behave like blind person. Such is the practice of practice with respect. You don't. You need not look around yourself in the surrounding. It is not necessary for you to look. It is not your business. You should look at yourself. You should observe yourself. That is important. With application of aim and energy, with mindfulness, strengthen your strong with strong mindfulness. You should be able to note whatever arises in your body. You should, be, you should be mindful of yourself. Be with the present. If you are, if you are looking here and there, then you will be losing this priceless bhavana, mind deliverance practice. This is bad for you. This is not desirable. If you are looking around, being mindful of the surrounding for one minute, you're going to lose 60 times at the rate of one second per loss. In five minutes, you're going to lose 300. 300 times. There will be no pure mind. Hence, you've got to behave as though you are blind. Only be mindful of yourself. And then, you got to, even if you have the ear to hear, you should pretend that you are not hearing anything. You, are, you should pretend like a deaf person. There are bound to be some sounds or noises, voices around you, like somebody drinking or opening a door and so on. You should not take note of those surroundings, of those voices or sounds. Even if you hear the sound, you should note as such. This is your the practice of with respect. Now during sitting and walking you are bound to hear such sounds. So please just note as hearing, hearing. If you are thinking about these external objects, how people are drinking, or how people are opening and shutting the door and so on, then you are bound to lose your mindfulness. Not only do we lose mindfulness, skillful things, you are allowing unskillful things to enter your stream of consciousness in the form of defilements, kilisas or hindrances. Hence, you should pretend not to hear them or even if you hear them, just note as such. Which is, self-observation is the best. Just be mindful of your of yourself. Not mindful of others. Otherwise you lose your mindfulness. And you should bear them. You should bear it. And with respect, with activating your mindfulness 
as soon as you hear or see anything. You should make it a habit so that you will not be overcome by likes or dislikes or aversion so that uh, your mind will become balanced, which is very important. Jaro says uh, during his, uh, uh, about his experience, when he was practicing at the age of over 20, just over 20, in the Mahasi Center, he was staying in the same room with an elderly uh, monk who used to sleep, go to bed at about 8 o'clock in the evening and started snoring. So, Jaro thought about moving to another place. Of course, it is not easy to move to another place because accommodation in those days was limited. So he also didn't want to move elsewhere. In the beginning, of course, he was a little disappointed, but not angry. So he started noting and hearing, hearing. And as he go, as he went on noting, the sound slowly moved away and away, farther and farther away from him, so that uh, he was able to win over it. From that time on, however much his uh, companion was snoring, he was not disturbed, he was not bothered by such sound. Instead, he was able to know them off so that he was winning over himself. Instead of criticizing others or criticizing another person, he was mindful of himself and he was able to win in this way. So nowadays, now also, some of the yogis are very sensitive to the surrounding noise or surrounding somebody walking by or things like that. But uh, they should give priority, priority to their own self-observation. Because you are living in a crowd, you are bound to be disturbed or bothered by such things, noises and thing, movements and things like that. But try to practice, be mindful of yourself, uh, mindful of uh, these things, so that such is will be the practice of practice with respect, so that there will be no likes and dislikes, no aversion, no hatred, which is very important. And another thing is that uh, although you have the general knowledge, you are knowledgeable by reading books or practicing elsewhere and things like that, you should hear at this point, at this, at this stage, and hear at this retreat, you should pretend as though you are dumb. A dumb person will not be able to say anything. So you behave like a dumb person. Don't say anything. As though you don't know anything. The only thing you do is your mindfulness. And then also not to act as though, be as though you are a clever person. So in this way, not to uh, speak as much as possible. And the Buddha said that uh, that means one should behave uh, like a a noble silence, like just a noble silence, which is uh, recommendable, recommendable for the yogis. Not that you should not speak at all, but uh, so long as you are mindful, and this is what is meant by uh, observing noble silence. So long as you are able to behave like this, you are noble and practicing in a highly manner, in a high manner. And then another thing is that uh, although you are a strong and healthy person, you should behave as though you are a very weak person, like a patient in a hospital, hospital, moving slowly, not to rise up or sit or stand or walk about, bend, stretch uh, quickly, suddenly. You should slow down as much as possible. In the beginning, of course, in the practice, you will not be able to catch up with the arising and passing away of these formations mind-body formations, but uh, as has been said, uh, you should cut down your speed to zero gradually, so that you are able to catch up with the rising and passing way of these formations, mind-body objects. When you are doing it, you should move, you should stand or sit slowly, such as Sakisha Karita. You should make it a habit, make it a practice. Then, uh, in this way, you let go 
This is this practice is the one of letting go. You let go, Parisada, your comfortable life, your free willing life, uh, which is not so, which is not, uh, uh, which is not desirable, or which is which is not as desirable as the freedom that you are after, the, the, the goal that you are after, which is assured happiness, assured peace and happiness, pure freedom. This is what, this is your goal. So in order to gain that, you've got to pay for it. So there's no, as I say, no pain, no gain. You've got to let go these free willing uh, manner, behaviors, uh, comfortable life. So in the text is given this, uh, you've got to uh, bear, you've got to be tolerant. To what extent should, should you be tolerant? To what extent should, be, should you be patient? You should be patient like a dead person. A dead person, a corpse, will not be able to feel anything. He will not complain if you, if you go and poke him or her. So, in, so much should, should you be able to bear or be patient, not to complain, but to bear any unbearable pain with, with grinning teeth. Such is the kind of perseverance, perseverance that you should possess. Of course, if you are not able to bear the pain, excruciating, unbearable, you can, of course, change slowly, mindfully, such as Sakecha Karita.